everyone. It's fantastic to see all your faces today. It puts me in a good mood, just like music does. Speaking of music, maybe you are taking a family road trip this summer. It really makes the time fly when you are listening to some good music. Does your family have a playlist that they like to listen to in the car? Is there one song that you all like to sing along to? I want you to tell me one song that your whole family likes to sing to in the car. Tell me in three, two, one. I love it. I'm gonna add some of those to my family summer playlist. There's nothing like pressing play on your music mix to amp up your confidence. Of course, true confidence is much deeper and lasts far longer than even your longest playlist. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. We've had a fun summer so far learning exactly how God sees us. God loves us. He has a good plan for our lives. He can use us to do big things and make a difference in the world around us. We've got another incredible story of confidence from the Bible that we'll learn about in a little bit. But before that, let's check out this month's Dear God video. I'll see you in July. Dear God, yesterday was the day. I think Em sent out the invitations months ago. We all knew that her birthday party was going to be huge. Every girl in class got an invitation, and Em always threw the best parties. I don't know when I started getting nervous. Maybe the day before, maybe two days before, but I really started freaking out Friday morning. I mean, Em always looks so fantastic. The invitation said dress to impress, and all that I had was the stuff in my closet. I don't know if dress to impress meant crazy, or cool, or high fashion. I wasn't feeling good about any of it. My stomach started hurting because I was so nervous. Just when I was texting M that I couldn't go is when Gina came in. God, I haven't always thank you for my sister, but I should have. She's amazing. I mean, I knew she would help me to look awesome, but the huge thing she did was remind me that I didn't have to compare myself to anyone. You see me and you love me. Please help me to always see me how you see me. Or at least always send my big sister to remind me. Love, Tatum.
Isaiah 48 verse 18, if you had obeyed me, then peace would have come to you like a full flowing river. Good things would have come to you again and again, like the waves of the sea. Whoa! When we obey God, we will have so much of God's goodness around us that it will be like we are swimming in it. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. Israel was ruled by many kings who didn't listen to God, but King Ahab was the very worst. He even built a temple to a false god. Everybody worship Baal. He is very great because, I don't know, he can make it rain and stuff. What? But the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to King Ahab. As the Lord lives, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. You pipsqueak. Baal can make it rain. Also, off with your head. Elijah quickly departed the palace, and at the Lord's direction, he escaped and hid east of the Jordan River. For three years, there was no rain in Israel. Impossible. I won't allow it. Baal, make it rain this instant. Crops failed, rivers and brooks dried up. King Ahab was desperate. In fact, his wife Jezebel even hunted down most of the prophets of God that were left in Israel. Off with their heads. But through it all, God provided food and water for Elijah. In the third year of the drought, God spoke to Elijah again. Go, speak to Ahab. Then I will send rain on the land. You do realize he wants to kill me. Okay, here goes. As Elijah traveled to the palace, he met King Ahab on the road. Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I haven't made trouble for Israel. You have. Yeah, well, I'm rubbing your glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. You've abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. <laughs> what else? He's more popular. You want a showdown? Fine. Gather all the people and meet me on Mount Carmel. Oh, oh and bring all the prophets of Baal. Oh, you're on. King Ahab sent a message throughout the land, and the Israelites gathered on Mount Carmel, along with 450 of the prophets of Baal. Uh, how long will you go back and forth between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal's God, follow him. I'm the only prophet of the Lord left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Hey, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets prepare one of the bulls and place it on an altar to Baal, but not light it. I'll put the other bull on an altar to the Lord. The God who answers by fire, well, he is God. What you say is good. The prophets of Baal prepared a bull as a sacrifice and placed it on the altar to Baal. A Baal, this is for you. Light this bull on fire. Hey, Baal, answer us. From morning until noon, the prophets of Baal danced around the altar, calling on their false god. <clears throat> hey, shout louder. Uh, maybe he's asleep or, or on a trip. <laughs> the prophets of Baal danced harder and shouted louder all through the afternoon, but there was still no answer. At last, Elijah stood up. Enough. Come here to me. Elijah took 12 large stones and rebuilt an altar to the Lord. Then he took the bull and sticks of wood and placed them on the stones and dug a deep trench around the entire altar. He turned to several of the Israelites and said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. You 
do know wet wood doesn't burn, right? Just do it. Now do it again. Do it a third time. The wood became so wet, water even flowed down the altar and filled the trench. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let everyone know that you are the one true God. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. There was a long moment of silence. Everyone waited, breathless. And then fire fell from heaven onto the altar and instantly burned up the wet wood and the sacrifice, even licking up the water in the trench. The people fell on their faces. Terrified, the prophets of Baal tried to escape, but were captured and wiped out. Elijah turned to King Ahab. Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Though the sky was completely clear, in a short time a tiny cloud appeared. More clouds joined the first. They turned dark and black. The wind rose and fat drops of rain splattered onto the dry earth for the first time in three years. Filled with God's strength and joy, Elijah raced ahead of King Ahab's chariot to the city. God had done the impossible. There might be some situations in your life that might seem impossible. Maybe you think you'll never understand fractions or that life will never feel normal again after this pandemic. When things seem impossible, you have to trust God and believe that He is with you. He's always in control. And God can do the impossible. Say that with me. God can do the impossible. Like when He sent His only Son to earth, to be our Savior. And remember, Jesus did things that seemed impossible all the time. He performed amazing miracles, and then after he died on the cross, he came back to life. We worship a God who can do the impossible. And that's what Elijah believed. He was sure of God's power. He was confident that God would come through that day on the mountain, even though it seemed impossible. We can live with that same kind of confidence, too. We can choose to trust God and put our faith in Him. Let's say our memory verse for June one more time. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Let's pray together. Dear God, you are all-powerful. We know that you can do things that might seem impossible. Help us to have faith like Elijah, to trust that no matter how hard things get, no matter how impossible they seem, nothing is impossible with you. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we'll see you next month. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh. Get in the party's hopping Get in
crowd with all you got. Y'all ready? Oh, come on, come on. Clap your hands like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Clap your hands like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Now clap your hands like this. Like this. Have confidence. 